What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today we are looking at, again, the Glass Notes Insight, week 34, 2021. Bitcoin has continued to rally to a new multi-month high despite an uptick in distribution, spending by older coins, and a divergence in on-chain activity. Before we get into it completely, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. Thank you to all those who have. While you're down there, be sure to turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video is coming up. Don't miss out, right? And also while you're down there, uh, go follow me on Library. Library and Odyssey is the same thing. You can download the app on your phone. It's called Odyssey. Um, it's a decentralized, uh, YouTube basically. And I think everyone should start looking at this more and more and gearing up for when, uh, YouTube just even becomes more, uh, <clears throat> prone to censorship. Okay. Also, please feel free to leave a comment. I totally encourage, uh, any sort of disagreement. My one request is that you please be civil in your discord and kindly disagree with me if you have any disagreements. Thank you so much. Let's get into it. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> the Bitcoin market has experienced yet another strong week with prices rallying from the weekly low of 43,998 to a new multi-month high of 49,669. Confidence, conviction, and positive sentiment have followed this uplift in prices as Bitcoin climbs closer to reclaiming its trillion dollar valuation. The key level to break is 53,000 for Bitcoin to return to the 12 zeros club. This week has seen some minor profit realization on chain by long term holders, although so far it does not appear to be of significant coin volume to put the brakes on. <clears throat> In this edition of the newsletter, we will assess both the state of on-chain activity as well as characterize the current spending behavior of investors. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so here we can see this week in green. Look at that. That was just explosive those two days. Open interest escalates. In derivatives markets, open interest for both futures and options has climbed alongside price to reach new local highs. After the precipitous fall from the uh, 27.4 billion all-time high during the May sell-off, open interest in Bitcoin futures markets has risen to uh, by 6 billion, that's a 56% uh, increase from the lows of the recent consolidation. This week in particular saw an increase of $1 billion in futures contracts open as traders begin to take on more leverage. <clears throat> in terms of directional bias for traders, the perpetual futures funding rate has been a moderate lean on to the long side. Funding rates have uh, traded positive since late of July as futures markets trade above spot prices. However, the magnitude of funding is nowhere near the peak seen in the Q1 and Q2 bullish trend. This may indicate that excessive leverage is not uh, in play just yet, but perhaps uh, the uptrend remains reasonably spot driven and healthy. <clears throat> Option markets have also seen multi month highs in open interest rising by over 4.1 billion. That's a 105% increase since the low set in June. The current level of 8 billion in open contracts is similar to, uh, to levels seen in the May sell off and in February, January, February 2021. Note that prices were lower, trading around 30,000 to 40,000 in both of those previous instances. This too suggests that relative to the total market size, the degree of open interest in derivatives markets is relatively low compared to the degree of leverage seen in the first half of the year. Look at that just rising up since uh, late July. <clears throat> so more and more options traders coming into uh, to Bitcoin. That wasn't really a thing, you know, uh, in the last the last runs. Always something new. Exchange balances plateau. This week we have seen signals on chain that some investors, particularly those with older UXTOs, have been spending coins. This week saw a very slight uptick in BTC held on exchanges, which follows a month-long plateau in coin, uh, coin balances. 
After the significant net inflow of around 140,000 BTC to exchanges in May, July saw around 110K BTC in net outflows, largely rever reversing that trend. However, throughout August, exchange balances have stalled at around 2.5 million BTC, approximately 13% of the circulating supply. The exchange flow metric uh, that this week saw shows that this week saw overall net inflows to exchanges as some traders and investors appear to be taking profits and capitalizing on market strength. It is worth noting that the magnitude of inflow is not dissimilar to that seen through the December 2020 to April 2021 bull market period and is reasonably expected behavior. <clears throat> The chart below combines the realized profit and realized loss metric using the workbench tool. From this, we can see that uh, overall investors holding profitable coins are currently spending more value on chain than those with coins that are underwater. The decline, the decline in realized losses of late could indicate that, re, that investors have found renewed conviction to hold on or are potentially taking exits that are closer to their original cost basis as prices recover towards the 50k range. <clears throat> so who's spending on chain? If we investigate the spent output age bounds metric, we can start to dissect which cohorts uh, of the market are spending coins. This week has seen a noticeable uptick in older coin ages, particularly those uh, older than six months. In the last year, these older coins have come back to life on a similar scale in two instances. Distribution in a bull market as old coin holders take profit into market strength and distribution in market uh, major sell-offs as old coin holders de-risk during the recent major correction. <coughs> <coughs> we see a similar view looking at spend outputs aged between six months and five years, which largely captures experienced Bitcoin investors and traders who have weathered the non-trivial volatility in this cycle already. We can see a sharp uptick in all age bands this week, which further suggests that some coins are taking exit liquidity. This perspective has also been highlighted by analysts, uh, the TXMC Trades, who has uh, utilize the workbench tool to observe the combined proportion of all spent outputs aged between six months and five years. TXMC highlights that the current spending behavior where five to seven percent of spent outputs are in this age range have historically correlated with the high volatility periods. <clears throat> it also suggests that relative to previous cycles, owners of older coins tend to be more active traders in more recent years in the 2000 to, uh, 2011 to 2013 cycles, older coins typically only came back to life around macro tops and bottoms, whereas today it's more common around mid-cycle corrections and rallies. This demonstrates a degree of market maturity and financialization of Bitcoin over time as more active traders and funds enter the space. <clears throat> Let's read the tweet too. Six month to five year group is important because they represent mature coiners and many have experienced at least one bull bear cycle. Here we're showing the daily volume of six month to five year coins as a percent of all the volume. It is smooth with a 14 day moving average. By applying a bit of color, we can highlight areas on the price chart where older coins made up a higher percentage of the daily volume. This helps bring to life the settle, selling behavior of long term holders. A few observations stand out. The spending of older coins has also shown up as a trend in the ASOL metric, which measures the average age of all spent outputs that day. This trend of rising average age has been in place since July and throughout this rally, which suggests two things. Profits are being realized by old hands, confirming what has been observed in the charts above. The market is absorbing the sell-off side so far as prices have continued to climb. This indicates there is sufficient demand to absorb the coins being distributed. The realized cap hodl wave provide a last piece of evidence surrounding the current on-chain spending behavior as the young coin bands, less than one month old, have swelled through August. Throughout August. 
This indicates that older coins have been spent and revalued into younger coin age brackets. Note, however, that the magnitude of increase for these age bands is very much in line with those seen in the 2020 accumulation phase. What this suggests is that while old USTOs have been, have definitely been spent in August, the actual coin volume they distributed is likely not over uh, very significant. <clears throat> This supports that the uh, relatively minor exchange balance increase shown in the chart in the section above. <clears throat> on-chain activity remains divergent. In what continues to be an amazing divergence, on-chain activity st has still not responded to positive price action. Entity-adjusted transaction counts remain at historically low levels of between 175k and 200k transactions per day. These low levels have been seen in a few instances in the past five years, in the 2016-2017 bull market during the disbelief rally and in the uh, mid-bull pullbacks, the 2018-2019 uh, bear market as interest in Bitcoin waned and prices corrected 85% from the highs, and the current period following the 50% correction in May and 2.5, um, two and a half months of consolidation. <clears throat> but we are rising in TXs per day. So which one is it? Is it the end? Well, I guess it's both of them could be good because look at this one. This is in the 2016 disbelief rally and what happened? Uh, it started to go up in January, 2017. So that was like, if, if it's like this one, like you had an entire year then of, of momentum to a bull run, but then you had it again, which is, uh, was like right before the final parabolic move, which is like basically September through December. Okay. Or really October through December. Okay. And then, okay. So if it could be this, then it could really, really go high. Okay. Um, same with this, that means it could, it could even go higher, higher. And then even with this, at the end of the, um, the bear run, it just means it could take more time. But, I don't know, that one seems good to me all around. Transaction volumes are similarly depressed with the Bitcoin uh, network setting around $18.8 billion in daily volume. This is 37% lower than at the 20, 2017 bubble peak and a whopping 57.6% below the peak set in the May capitulation event. That said, settlement volume remains 276% higher than the 5 billion that was typically throughout 2020, although we should account for the fact that the price is traded up from 10k to the current level approaching 50k. That's a 500% increase. <clears throat> However, despite this significant divergence between rising prices and the low on-chain activity, the overall supply dynamics remain extraordinarily, extraordinarily macro bullish. This week, the supply held by long-term holders has reached an all-time high of 12.69 million BTC, surpassing the previous peak of, from October of 2020. Through the Q1, Q2 bull market, long-term holders distributed approximately 1.7 billion BTC which ultimately created oversupply and put the current all-time high pr uh, price top. <clears throat> Following that, investors dramatically slowed down their spending and uh, the coins that were accumulated in late 2020 and early 2021 have consistently matured across the approximately 155-day threshold for classifications as long-term holders. The recovery of long-term holder supply to all-time high has taken just 100 days, which goes to show just how significant the accumulation was in the early phase of this bull market. The fact that this trend has yet to slow down also demonstrates that significantly more coin volume is getting older than younger. This adds further weight to the argument that old hand spending observed this week is likely of low, low coin volume and strategic de-risking rather than a loss of conviction and mass exit. That all looks good. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I appreciate you. Love you all. Take care. Peace.